it's very difficult to convey this information to people because um, we have a diverse set of beliefs. But there comes a point in time where you have to just let it flow out anyway. It is the truth. And I'm not going to be one to perpetuate a lie or a similitude of something close to the truth. But rather, uh, I, I just would say everybody wants the truth. I did mention some of the some of the ancient texts that some of you are familiar with, and I had to. I just wanted to know if you guys were familiar with those texts. There is a bit of confusion about those texts, and all of it's not false, but some of it is biased, of course, which throws some people off, right? And so, to actually understand the history, and this is why we're having a linguistics expert uh, come on to Council of Time. Uh, that individual will be on with me. And, and this individual was part of a team that did something uh, very special. You'd be shocked to know what ancient texts actually point to. It is the history before history, and it is supportive of every single word of the Lord. You see, something happened that most readers of ancient texts are missing. That information was recorded a long time ago, but time has still been going on since then. So what's going on now? Nobody knows. They're just they're deriving information from a long time ago from what um, what the team calls the babies, the baby angels. They call them baby angels, which means they were although they were thousands of years old, they were very young, and so they had issues and they had problems. And the story of the fallen angels, by the way, the story of the fallen angels does touch base with their politics and everything else. But I need to tell you something tonight because it reveals an origin of yourselves. Number one, you were not put here to be a slave to mankind. You certainly were not put here, right, to, to indulge in things. Here, this is so funny. I'm going to twist something for you. You're not here to be a slave. However, by fighting for man-made things, you have made yourself a slave. Isn't that funny? Isn't that uh, kind of just warps your brain right there, doesn't it? You were, not, you were not born into slavery. You were born into a world inside of a kingdom that you call home, but it's not the kingdom that is your home. And through your servitude and through your earthly, your liking of earthly pleasures, you become a slave to the system. Many people fly, fight for their slavery. That's what they're doing. They're fighting to keep their slavery going, and they have no idea they're doing it. You have to ask yourself, why would the elite hide information in the first place? What damage could it really do? I'll tell you what it would do. It would verify your origins. It would verify uh, four different types of people on the face of this earth. It would verify... What seed you're of. In the Bible it says what spirit you're of. Remember when Jesus said you don't know what spirit you're of. That same word spirit in the Greek interchanges with the word seed that was used in the Old Testament, Aramaic and Hebrew. Right? And so both are interchangeable. And most people don't know what seed they're of. See, it was already said we're in this world, not of this world. That's very true in the literal sense. But nobody wants to comprehend nor understand that. You're in this world, but you're not of this world. Now, how many people can figure that one out? Many people read that and they try to rationalize the statement and just skip over it. Just leave it undone, right? There's a reason why you don't quite fit into society. Because you're not of this world. The seed within you, the spirit within you, is not of this world. There are some who do have a seed of this world. And they perpetuate the system. Those are called the elite. The elite. You see, a long time ago, in the days of Jared, something happened to mankind, forever changed mankind. The dynamic of life itself changed. It changed. It was altered. Different races sprung up. Different ones. All of it was different. Now, we have many people. Many different types of people. We have many different types of agendas, but there are only four major agendas to humanity, period. Four 
major agendas to humanity. Now, if you're smart, you write that down because it will be complimented over the course of some weeks. And you're going to find out something, although you can't say something like this direct. You're going to figure it out. There are four different agendas because there are four species of human beings. Four species. Now, if you're a geneticist and you begin to look at junk DNA, you already know it's not junk DNA. They have figured out so much in the last 10 years. There's been an information explosion. The ability to figure things out through supercomputers has just, I mean, it has dramatically changed everything. Oh, oh, and by the way, they have tested and tried the junk DNA to see what it produces. They're just not allowed to allow these things to grow to maturity. They know what it affects in the human body. That's why they test, test, test. It also gives way to both, both, listen, harp, and both CERN, harp, and CERN. Those are two pieces of equipment that you know about. You don't know about. Each one has a complement of an entire network of systems. You just know about the two, HARP and CERN. One an antenna array, the other one a particle accelerator. Right? You know about those two systems. Do you know they go hand in hand? Do you know that? And I ask you again, why would the elite keep information secret in the first place? The Bible's not secret, is it? Nope. Why would they keep their information secret? Why? Why would they do that? I'll tell you why. If you found out the true history of what was happening in their search for a very long time, and it is biblical, it's in the Bible, you would just say no more, no more. You would become who you are. And, and when that would happen, that would be the end of it all. It would be the end. Isn't that funny? You know why there are four species of humans? Because there are four origins to humanity. Four seeds of humanity, period. Four seeds of humanity. When the fallen angels came, everything was mixed up. The signs were all around you. They were all around you. It's in the heart of man. It's in the agenda of man. It's in your very thoughts. Listen, tonight is Wacky Wednesday. Do you guys allow me to go off the rails and discuss some things? Right? It didn't matter. It didn't matter if you read the Sumerian text or not. It does not matter if you believe in Nibiru or not. I'm going to talk about Nibiru too, just so you know. I'm also going to talk about the shock wave in October and the second wave. You need to prep yourselves. I don't mention that too much because uh, some of the information is now becoming sensitive. Sensitive means nobody can talk about it. That's why. But we will talk about Nibiru, what people call Nibiru. And I'll say it again, linguistics has come a long way. Has come a long way. I know what you have read. Believe me. I was in part indirectly involved with some of the teams that are full of linguistics uh, experts who are deciphering some of the Sumerian tablets and now they have the proper keys. We're not talking about Zechariah Centrin. He did his best, but he had an agenda. Can't you tell? Zechariah Sentron had an agenda. Wasn't he Jewish, by the way? One of the other type Jewish people, not the good type, the bad type. You know, he was anti, he was uh, 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 anti-Semitic too. So of course, he was biased in a specific way. So we're going to talk about that. Now, I, I tell you this, go ahead and, go ahead and buckle your seatbelts, because let me tell you, Gil Broussard gave you guys some data points that are very important and imperative, so that you know what's going on. I heard one time, BP Earthwatch, he told you guys something. I guess it just skipped over his audience's head. They weren't really interested in it. He was given a history about something. Hmm. Isn't that strange? He gave a history and nobody paid attention to it. I think it was also some other folks that were talking about ancient Egypt. But because nobody liked the origin of the text, they just let it go. They didn't even look into the text and know that it mentioned Moses in there by his real name, by his Egyptian name. Isn't that funny? I see you guys typing the word you guys did this last night about Anunnaki, mistranslation as to what that is. How many of you know that? How many of you guys know? I know people think that Nephilim means, right, the fallen ones. Wrong, it does not, just so you know. It comes from that word, gigantis. 
a lot of people thought it meant fallen ones, and Nephilim are the children of the fallen ones. The t- a fallen one means the ones who were stranded here, just so you know. The ones who were stranded here. Isn't that funny? That is absolutely funny. They weren't allowed to return back to the throne or back to the place where they came from. And so guess what? They had to use the materials, both on earth and every other place they can get their hands on for what? For what? What they use that for? Technology. Biology. What have we done now? We've replicated the systems. Oh, we're going to talk about the dragon, its formation. And the seven lumps, or let's just say the the seven heads of the dragon. We're going to talk about the seven heads that have been established for a long time. Now, I can tell you this. If you begin to mention names of countries and places like that, you're going to miss the entire conversation. We should have learned that by the Bible, that a place is called a specific name, to capture the attitude or the occupation or the doings of that place. Names always remain the same, but the location does not. Just so you know. But we're going to talk about some mysteries because you're going to have to deal with it. And in truth, you already know the truth. It's already in you. There's nothing I can tell you that's brand new information. Because if I told you something that was brand new information, I would be lying. The only way I can tell the truth is that the truth is already in you. I can only speak that thing that resides within you. I can't speak anything new. There is nothing new. There's nothing new. When somebody says to you, hey, we got some some new, we got something new here, brand new, nobody's ever heard before, they're lying. That's not true. It's not true. Because how can you confirm truth? If the truth is not already within you, it won't work. I'll say it again. If I started to speak Japanese and you don't know Japanese, I'm speaking gibberish. You don't know what I'm talking about. The truth is the same way. If I spoke something and internally that truth is not within you, well, guess what's not truth? And by consensus of the entire body is the truth. Truth is in a multitude of counsel of all of us, not one or two. Truth is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. One thing we can one thing we have a consensus on concerning Jesus we never hear from is that he died on the cross for our sins. Hey, that's truth. In that truth, that's truth. But now you're gonna learn some of the other truths that are already within you. I began this last night. Oh, oh, by the way, listen, guys, just so you know, just so people who are they're joining us left and right. Wednesdays. I set aside Wednesdays to talk about that, those subjects. They do deviate from our normal uh, Bible studies. We don't speak absent the Spirit, however. We don't do that. But I do talk about those things that many people are aware of. They just don't talk about it. It's not popular. It's controversial. It makes people, you know, they don't like it. They think you're a cuckoo nut after you start talking about this stuff. Nevertheless, they're going to see it anyway, so I care less what they think about me. I really can. Right? Everything is fantasy until it happens. Right? Haven't you heard of all the, uh, in ancient times, how about Pompeii? How about that? You heard about Pompeii, right? They made a movie about Pompeii, wrote books about Pompeii. Nobody thought that volcano was actually going to erupt and kill everybody until it erupted and killed everybody. They thought it was mythological, didn't they? Oh, it's a myth. That volcano is not going to go off. We just need to appease the god inside the volcano, and we'll have a good time. That didn't happen. Oh, consequently, do you know why the volcano went off? Do you not know that the Christians, they didn't put this in the movie, but they were persecuting the Christians on that island. Let me tell you something you may not know. They were persecuting Christians on that island. And the Christians called out for Jesus of Nazareth. And an answer was given to them. And those Christians were told that the Lord would destroy that entire place because they have totally rejected his word in that place. Their job was finished. The job of the Christians was done. Then pump it. They didn't tell you that part. Oh, no, they don't want to tell you that because it involves Jesus of Nazareth. It makes him all too real. They didn't want to tell you that. You reject the word of God and then persecute the people. Guess what happens at your place? 
You're kapuf. You're done. You're finished. I'm telling you right now, it is because of you things are sustained and kept. If you're not there, this entire, if we were not on this earth, this entire earth would melt away. Not something. Not something. But that place was kaput because they were persecuting Christians. Hmm. Well, they did it, but they didn't print that in the story. Why? The elite didn't want them to. Why? Because they're spinning the truth. What is the spin on the truth? Never, never to ever put in a movie the true power of the living God through Christ our Lord. Yet they don't want to do that. They never want to do that. Why? Because some of you are of him. And if you ever confirm truthfully that you are of him, you're going to walk out of your chains. Your chains won't be broken. You're going to walk out of them. The chains will still be on you. You'll transfigure and walk right out of your chains. Nothing can hold you at that point. It is not by your mouth. It's through identification. See, they try to hide that from you so that you never identify who you truly are. That's why we search so much. That's why we want things confirmed to us all the time. Well, who am I? Where did I really come from? And this is why we take in all the information because we're still not sure. Somebody tell me I'm wrong. Why would anybody go to any other doctrine if they knew exactly who they were? The point is they don't know exactly who they are. They're trying to believe that, yes, I am this, but then another doctrine pops up and they say, hmm, I could be that. That means they don't know who they are. And when you don't know who you are, what do you do? You walk in circles. You obtain all knowledge. You're forever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. That's what happens to you. You walk around in circles in life. You learn all that's learnable, but you're never fulfilled. There's no satisfaction in a lie. I'll say it again. There is no satisfaction in a lie. The day you are full, the day you'll stop searching for who you are. And that's the day you go. You go to your creator and say, well, what am I to do? Most people are searching for who they are. They're not even searching for what they're supposed to do because they don't know who they are yet. When you find out who you are, you go to your creator and say, ah, What am I to do? And you want to know about the heritage. And you want to conform to everything of your father. That will be your primary desire. To be his child. But if you don't know who you are, you're going to read everything to find out, to try and determine who you are. Which means your servitude is incomplete. It's partial. It's back and forth. Right? Come on, somebody out there, tell me I'm wrong. Just say it, Mike, you're wrong. I don't believe that. Don't worry, I won't bite your head off. I don't do that. So, people do suffer from an identity crisis. Hmm. Strange thing. See, you know what? When you know who you are, there's fulfillment. You also never have to prove anything. When you know who you are, you'll never have to prove who you are. If you never have to prove who you are, you'll stand for the truth. You'll never force it. You'll stand for it. When you stand for the truth, you're not proving anything. You're not proving the truth. You operate by it. And when you operate by the truth, you're reaping a perpetual harvest of life. So that means your words will be full of life and not death. The one who reaps a harvest of life speaks life. How about that one? What are you speaking? Because a person who walks around condemning everything is full of death. They speak the very thing that's within them. Death, death, death. Death to all things. I don't like nothing. Everything is dark. Everything is dead. Yes, to you it is. But those who are alive can always recognize life. Jesus came and recognized life in dead things and said, come follow me. See, I love that. He spoke to the dead and said, get up and come and follow me. Did he not raise Lazarus from the dead? Hmm? Didn't he tell that little girl? That little girl is not dead. She's sleeping. Why? Why? Because he was full of life, eternal. 
And when he spoke, he spoke life eternal. See, I love that. What does man speak? Men speak of where they're from. They speak death. They speak destruction. They speak oppression. They speak things of power over another. That's what they do. If you're full of life, you will speak life. Now you know why. Life and death is in your mouth. Your life and your death. You can't speak death in my... Listen, oh, oh, a fallacy. I just have to get out of the way. You cannot speak death into my situation. You can try all day. It won't work. Your words are ineffective to me and my words ineffective to those who reside under the blood of the Lamb. Because every weapon turned against me, though it will form, it will not prosper. It's going back to the source because I'm covered by the blood of the Lamb. Not as per your instructions, as per my heart. So are you shielded in a like manner? So don't worry about people speaking death over you. You know how people walk around, don't speak death to me. That doesn't work. That's voodoo nonsense. That does not work. When somebody speaks death over your situation or you, you pray for them because you know they just spoke something over their own life and then you keep going forward. Okay, don't, don't get stumped by those things. Don't do that. This, all this has happened before, by the way. Every single last bit of it has happened before. Hmm. Archaeological finds indicate quite a few things, don't they? How many can figure out the vitrification that took place a long time ago? How many can figure out why the uh, texts like the Mahabharata exist in the first place? Let me tell you what people have done. Imagine yourselves. You're in training. You're called the sons of the living God. You're called sons of God. To as many as believe has he given power to become sons of God. That's you. That's you. So you're in training. You're in training. You're in training. You're in training. And because you're in training, you're learning quite a few things, right? And when you're learning quite a few things, you stumble on occasion. You're finding things out the hard way. You're, you're learning how to believe. Sorry about that little gap. And we got to make sure that they can record this useless information. No, I'm just joking. I don't get into the recording thing, folks. You guys know that. I have nothing to do with that. And I won't have anything to do with that. Do you know why? Do you guys know why? Because when you're in the body of Christ, no one person is supposed to control everything. I certainly don't want to control everything. I want the spirit to lead. And in doing that, you take a risk, don't you? You do. And I don't care about the risk. I want the Lord's spirit to prevail in all things. So I need not run that. All right? I don't control that. And I like things that way. But the Lord is always first. I, I just love that. I don't like control. Right? I like my father to control things. I do. So when he lays it upon the heart of anybody to do their thing, they do it. They do it. And I trust him in doing that. That's all in his hands. Right? Back to our conversation. Where do we start? Lord have mercy. In October, I'm going to tell you guys something. And it has to do with harp. And it has to do with CERN. Now, with every device that mankind builds, there is a reason they do so. Okay? There's a reason they do so. There's a reason CERN exists. And the CERN network exists. There's a reason why they have... Uh, lots of facilities just like CERN that work in tandem with CERN. All right? It is, in fact, a global effort. CERN is a global effort. How many of you know that? CERN is a global effort. HARP is a global effort. Did you know that Russia had their own HARP system? They were, they were tasked to do a part of what HARP is doing. And then HARP stations were put up in various uh, countries, just like CERN. Just like CERN. So they all have, they, they have a purpose. They just didn't set it up there and then lie to you. You know, they didn't tell you what it was doing. People have told you what it was doing. They didn't. And it's a funny thing. Most people assume what these things are doing. 
and they just love that. I'm telling you now, they eat that up. They love it when people assume and come up with their own definitions as to what something is doing. Now, me being privy to information, some people have gotten very close to some truth, and that's when resistance and a deterrence came to them. They've gotten very close to a truth. But I can tell you this, the truth is, uh, uh, you know, you, what's that one phrase? Can you handle the truth? Can you, can you really handle the truth? It's going to be a shocker. I can tell you this, most people on this earth are going to be in a state of shock here shortly. They'll be in a state of shock as, as this paradigm begins to unfold and the truth gets out. And you know what? It's all biblical. But we have to know, we have to be careful of how we hear things. If you hear things to fit it into what you know you're wrong, let me give an example. There are cases in the Bible, and if you read carefully, you're going to see it. Um, there's prophecy, and there's fulfillment of prophecy. But there's also mankind who will do a self-fulfillment of prophecy, right? In other words, they read something and then they make it happen. Simple as that. They read something, they believe what they read, and they make it happen. They do things according to what the prophecy says, or what the foretelling says, or whatever they're doing. The elitists work that way. They do that all the time. Most people say, well, they want to get rid of the useless eaters. Really? Then why are you still around? If they wanted to get rid of you, you would be gone. You really would be. You'd be gone. Have you ever thought of that? If they don't want you on the face of this earth, why not just get rid of you? Why not release a biotoxin they are immune to and just kill everybody like that? Why? Why haven't they done that? Why? Because they don't want to get rid of you that way. The true story is a little more close to home than you'd like. A little more close to home. You see, the elitist, all of their, the Illuminati, all of these little groups, the Masons, all these folks, come from the Brotherhood of the Serpent, which comes from very ancient, a very ancient order, which comes from the Fallen Ones. And what the Fallen Ones did was they mated with certain people. Remember, just call them the Fallen Ones. The angels that fell, right? Oh, by the way, they are alive. The fallen ones were alive. Where'd they come from? They didn't come from Earth. So what are they? Extraterrestrials. Just so you know, they throw these terms around to make you think of little green men, right? Stop doing that. An angel is not born here on Earth. Do you know that? If an angel is not born here on Earth, they are not from Earth. They are extraterrestrial, not terrestrial. They are, you know, their stuff is not what you think they are, right? It's just not. And they're masters of technology because they have to utilize technology. When you're kicked from the realm of where they were, when you fall, when you're no longer, when you can no longer get back to where you were, you have to utilize the tools at hand. And so they utilize the materials of earth and everything else to develop whatever they use. Think of yourselves. Think of yourselves right now. Right? And you go to an island. And you, you were a, a master craftsman or something like that. Well, then you build a house, much like a modern house today, but the indigenous people look at you and they say, hmm. They say, hmm, what, an, what, a, what a glorious building, because they'd never seen one before, but to you it's not glorious. That was part of your nature. That's the same thing that happened. When, when they fell and they made it with women, uh, first of all, you have to be physical to mate with a woman, don't you? Don't you have to be physical even to interact with people like that? Because they took a form. They could take any form they wanted, and they took a physical form. Made it with women, had children, which means they commingled with society, didn't they? When they commingled with society, they had what is called Nephilim. Nephilim comes from that term, gigantes, which, comes, which means giants. They had giants. Now, that word giant not only implies stature or height, but it also implies knowledge, intellect, wisdom, their ways. They were royal. Royalty. 
royalty is what they were. These called certain kings, giants, whether from the bloodline of the giants, not the Nephilim, but they were royal. All that is is wordplay. Royal. They produced royalty of the time who governed the kingdoms of earth. What do you think Nebuchadnezzar was, who he was, how he was? Right? All these uh, 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 people of royalty were very different individuals. But then he had another set of folks, another preserved bloodline. The one that God adopted himself and kept himself. See, God kept a bloodline for himself. Isn't that, that is so awesome. They were never polluted. They, they were dispersed throughout this earth. They were dispersed. So what we were seeing in the past was a bloodline feud. And that's why Joshua had to go out and kill all these third, fourth, fifth generation Anakim. Right? The Anakim, the Kihaz, all these different things. All these different folks. Some big in stature. Some extremely intelligent. Some extremely beautiful. Some, uh, uh, they, they call them the bright skins. You don't know about that group, the bright skins. They were somewhat, they just had their skin, was like it was illuminated. They were to be done away with. They were abominations. They were never purposed to be here. That came through the fallen angels who rebelled against God by disobeying him, right? And then having children, they were not supposed to, producing abominations in the earth and Ephilim. People who were not like you and I. That's hard for people to swallow. They read the Bible, but they do not believe in the story of Noah. They try to rationalize the story of Noah. Well, guess what? All those things are about to be reintroduced to you again. Every single last bit of the mysteries you thought were mysteries are going to be revealed to you. Some of you will duck and hide. Some of you will not come out of your house. I'll go out on the, go out anywhere and have a cup of coffee. Won't bother me because I didn't doubt in the first place. See, I'm not one of those that says, well, that's impossible because that's ignorance. In order for you to say something is impossible, you must have knowledge of all things that are possible. We don't have knowledge of all things that are possible. The only things we should ever deem impossible are those things that God said were impossible. Then we live righteous. How about that? Hmm? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Four species of humanity. Oh, they know who they are. Half of them are the elite. They have special privileges, whether you believe that or not. Let me tell you, let me, let me, be, let me include you in on something. You, you can never be born on this earth and all of a sudden be a billionaire. It will never happen. It will never happen. Some of you have the qualifications. Some of you are on the path, but you know yourselves. You know yourselves. You would be stopped if you went a step further. Some of you should have gone a step further, but something unfair happened to you, kicking you all the way back. Because you can never, ever, never, ever take a seat in, this, in these kingdoms. Because all of these kingdoms were made by the very thing you were at war against. Every single last one of these kingdoms is corrupted. Every last one is unrighteous. Every last one. And you know what the whole story is? You are preserved in the bloodline through Christ. You know that? Through the bloodline of Christ, you are preserved. Here's how that happened. Because he gave his life. He shed his blood that his blood covers you and you are fully adopted in that shed blood. Being made a citizen of the kingdom in truth. Having a spiritual change in truth. Your spirit's been changing and you've been covered by the blood of the lamb to be fully adopted as a citizen of the kingdom. That's why you're joint heirs with Christ because you have truly become a child of the living God, not the dead ones, and not the subsidiary things that people call gods a long time ago. Like if you've read the Sumerian text, they called them gods. They weren't gods. 
they were God's creation because they admitted they didn't even know where they came from. Only, only two of them knew where they came from and they would never speak it. They had the tablets on this place that had glory in the tablets, but they didn't make them. They didn't make those tablets. The tablets were a lifeline to their entire world. They didn't make them. Those were babies. They were babies. That's what they were. And so at, with most, most babies who are disobedient, they fall into the inherent nature of rebellion, which is to form little groups, which is to be jealous of one another, which is to have power struggles amongst themselves. All that is in disobedience. There's no wholesomeness there. Right? Power struggles indicates nobody knows where they're supposed to be and everybody wants to be at the top. That's where power struggles come from. Look at humanity. Do they not have power struggles? One will sit on one side and say, I'm right. Follow me. The other one sits on the other side and they say, I'm right. Follow me. That's what the elite do. And the poor little slaves, the people who love the systems, they say, well, that, that's right. He's right and that one's wrong. i got news for you. Both are wrong. Both are wrong. And only, only the giver of life is right. But they don't want to listen to him. Both are wrong. I'm telling you the truth. People have enslaved themselves into systems they did not build. They have deemed them holy and now they're slaves to them and they will kill for those systems. If you say no to the system, they'll say, well, you're just, uh, you're just, uh, you're, get out of these kingdoms. That's, they don't want to have anything to do with you. They think you're less than the less. In fact, the entire premise of education is to serve the system well. That's the entire, go back through your education. Some of you who just, you, you graduated, you got your, your, your uh, bachelor's or your doctors and masters. You've been trained to properly serve the system. You've been educated to help educate others to serve the system. That's all. That's it. Oh, they're, they're, listen, what they have done is just mind-blowing. It's mind-blowing. You have toys to keep you occupied, movies to change your brain, how your brain perceives things. You're totally okay with it. They even gave you internal problems to sort out your own, all of this, a distraction from what the truth is. Do you not know that half your problems in the world are distractions to take you away from who you really are? And for what's really coming upon the face of the earth? Do you not know that mankind, some of you, listen, I'm telling you, some of you, some of you are going to have a hard time keeping your heart going when you learn the news. Why? Because it's going to tear down your entire paradigm of what you thought was. Some Christians who refuse to listen to the entire truth are going to fall away because no one ever told them what they're going to behold with their own eyes. No one told them. No one mentioned it. Everybody was too scared to mention it. They said, oh, don't mention that. People will make fun of you and scoff you and everything else. Well, see, now it's coming a time that you're going to see it with your own eyes. And some of those people who knew the word of God, who knew these things but did not say it, nobody's going to want to listen to them because they're going to point at them and say, you lied to us. You didn't tell us this. You told us all the good stuff. And you didn't tell us this. Why didn't you tell us this? Why didn't you give me that piece of steak? No, you just tried to make me feel good. You didn't give me the steak. And they, they, they're just going to become powerless. And then that person will fall away. That person's faith also will be shaken. Why do you think people run away from certain topics now? Because it fights against their paradigm and their faith. Isn't that something? People don't like anything that fights against their faith, right? I mean, let me clue you in on something. Nothing can fight against my faith. You know why? Because my measure of faith that the Lord has given me, I accept. Do you accept the faith that he's given you? Or do you question what he's given you? I don't question what he's given me. 
You see, to me, all other knowledge is always secondary. Guess what the first, the first piece of knowledge I keep above all things, guess what it is? It is simply this, Jesus is Lord. That's above all things. Everything else is beneath that. On top is Jesus is Lord. Everything is subjected unto him by me. I subject all things to the truth of the Spirit. So everything's below that. So I'm never, I'm not confused. Our interpretation of things can be wrong. My interpretation of things can be wrong. But guess what? Above all things, Jesus is Lord. I'm not here to defend my position on this or that. But the Lord, he had me go through some things so I could communicate the small piece of truth he gave me with you because you're going to see it anyway. There's nothing new under the sun. It has existed. It exists. And it will exist all the way up until the judgment. All the way up. What do you think you've been fighting against anyway? Let me give you an example of something. People don't know what they're fighting. If you have a person with the same situation, listen to me close. If you have a, two families with the same situation, you have one family that will say it's the devil. You have another family that will say, no, this is from God. Oh, let's throw in a third. You have a third family that says, well, we did this. We caused this problem in our own lives. It's the same situation. Three different families. will tell. One will tell you the devil's doing it. One will tell you that God sent it as a trial. The other ones will say, we failed to do something. That's why this is happening. Why do they not have a consensus on the same problem? Why? Because he can't identify where it's coming from. How do you identify Lucifer? You need to read your Bibles. The New Testament will identify Lucifer, his role, what he's actually doing. I guarantee you he's not doing things in your life you think he's doing. Have you given Lucifer permission to come into your life and operate? Have you? Because if you have not, then you're being raised by the living God. When we don't like a situation, we blame it on Lucifer and say the devil is doing it. Well, let me tell you something. If the devil does something and you serve your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he can't do it anymore. It's done for. You're not Job. You have the blood of the Lamb over you. You have the authority of Yahshua HaMashiach within you. But when the Lord does something, sending you a trial or tribulation, well, that's different. You can pray against it all you want. It's not going anywhere. You can believe you're going to get out of it all day, but it's still there. Come on, wake up, folks. Let's, let's, let's get this real thing because he's raising you. He is raising you. All principalities, all powers, everything else is subject unto Christ. And all spirits are subject unto you through the name of Christ. You're being raised. Your situation's purposeful. We just don't want the situation, and therefore we say the devil did it. You know, people normally think, well, I don't want to admit that I really did it. Let's put it on the devil. Let's say he did it. No, the Lord already told you that you're going to have trials and tribulations. That's one of the biggest promises in the word of God that you're going to have trials and tribulations. But why to raise you? What's so important about raising you through fire? What's important about that? I'll tell you what. Because the time you live in, ladies and gentlemen, every trial, every trouble, every circumstance in your life, you're going to thank the Lord for that one day. Every pain you ever felt in your body, you're going to say, oh Lord, thank you so much for having me in that pain for so long. You're going to thank him. You're going to thank him from the depths and the truth of your heart for every moment of difficulty you've ever had in your life. See, somebody's been lying to the body of Christ, has deceived them greatly. Proof number one. Here's the proof. How many of you have been through trials and tribulations all throughout your life and they have not ceased? How many? Just about all of you. How many were pressed into a corner and that's when you truly came to Christ? Just about all of you. Just about every single last one of you. 
How many have problems and circumstances in your life right now? Just about every single last one of you. How many think they escape their problems and situations one day and say, today I'm going to relax, and then the phone rings and you're back into another one again? Every single last one of you. So who lied to you telling you, well, your days are going to be good to go now? They lied. You won't have any burdens going forward. They lied too. You've had more burdens. You've had more. You've had more. Why? Because you're being trained. You think your training is ordinary? Don't you discount your training. Don't discount your training. Don't discount your training. You're being trained. on. You're going to need every ounce of training you've ever received. Do you really know what's coming? Looking past the hype and the speculation, do you really know what's coming? Remember that one day I told you guys you'd be shocked at what the spiritual realm is, what mankind has actually tapped into, how far they have come in a very short time. To you, it would be astounding, something you can't believe, and you shouldn't be that way. If somebody told you, well, you know, I know this group talks to the demons from over there, you shouldn't just instantly discount that. But you need to understand something. You need to understand that the demonic realm is a realm just like this one with a gate around it. What's that gate for, them or us? The gate is for us. That's what it's for. You're playing in the backyard of a house and all the animals and wolves are sitting on the opposite side of the gate, right? That gate is coming close to earth. Here it comes. It's coming. You know what that gate is called? You know what comes with the gate? See, a lot of people, they can't think of the spiritual things with the physical things. I realize that many of you, because you guys are just as strange as I am, right? You, you did, you know, you guys have read things like the, the Sumerian text, of course. You've read the translations from Zechariah Centurion. You read the Colburn Bible. You guys have read those things because you're just as strange as I am. You've read texts and documents from just about everybody you can get your hands on. Did you notice a commonality that existed a long time ago among all the cultures, even Native Americans in America? Hmm. They have a commonality. You know what it is? Destruction. They have another commonality. You know what it is? They knew when it was coming. They had one more commonality. You know what it was? Nobody believed it until it hit. And when it hit, they were terrified to pieces. And they all admit on one thing. Guess what? It came from the skies. Oop, they did. It came from the skies. But what they have stricken from the records, what they won't let you see, are the spiritual happenings that took place at the same time. Oh, they took place at the same time. And this is why you need those who are experts in their field that do the true translations, that have the real keys to the uh, uh, Arcadian and Sumerian texts, not the false ones by interpretation. I have nothing against anybody, but I cannot read an interpretation from a biased mouth. If somebody does not like the church... I can't read anything from that person with their biased mouth. So what I'm telling you is that people have brought forth some very good information, but if you're biased, you just kill the entire translation. You alter things to suit your paradigm. And then you spend a lifetime defending your own writings. Sitting up saying, well, I'm right, and everybody else is wrong. Well, that's, you just ruin the whole thing. I'm telling you right now, some of what Zechariah Ascension brought forward was absolutely documented, true, good translation. But it's biased. It's like he mingled commentary in there. He took the texts and he interpreted the texts for his readers. It is not verbatim what the texts actually say. He interpreted those things. He did. He interpreted those things. And he's biased. So he had some of the information, but listen, he did that a long time ago, right? Since that time, we have developed computer systems. We have teams that have translated so many things. We have accuracy in the translations due to instant. You can, you can compare billions of different keys against a phrase and come up with the right one. The translation will just knock you right out of your chair. 
Some of the names of what they called people were absolutely wrong. All those names have an origin. All those names meant something. You, you, you hear people talking about these things like Tiamat, right? You heard the name Tiamat. You guys have heard about the bracelet, the, the, the uh, uh, what is it, the stone bracelet, which is the asteroid belt. You heard about those things. What if I told you, what if I told you, well, we can't go into that. that that's a Saturday thing, but uh, there's a true translation to this that will just floor you, knock you off your feet. It makes things make sense, and that's why they've been hiding it. But listen, anything that will fight against the elite, they will never allow to be printed, nor will the information ever reach the surface. Anything that serves the elite, although it may be the truth, but tainted with bias, they're going to allow the release of it all over the place. Let me tell you how the elite are. You start releasing a true truth, they're going to kill you before you ever get started. If there was a book that had absolute truth in it other than the Bible that was being distributed, well, first of all, it would never get that far then everybody who bought the book, it will be taken from those people. Then the person who wrote the book would be killed. And then everybody who published the book would go missing. But if it serves their purpose, through bias and other means, well, then you have a problem. That's why man's prophecies have been failing over and over and over and over and over again. Because you need spiritual guidance with spiritual things. Was this earth created? Yes. Were the planets created? Yes. Do most Christians believe that? No, they don't. Let me tell you how. Many people believe in evolution not knowing that Charles Darwin made up evolution to get back at the church. He came up with an explanation as per demons. He admitted this himself about evolution. Evolution has never worked. It does not work. But work. Microbiologists laugh at evolution and then they killed off a bunch of microbiologists. Now, you've heard about them killing bankers. You've heard about them killing astrologers and all these, or, or I'm sorry, amateur astronomers. But when's the last time you heard of them killing off microbiologists? Hmm? 2011, 2010, 2012, just about all the elite microbiologists were killed. Why? Because they were about to come out, disprove this Darwinism and say, hey, absolutely, 100%, all life on this planet was created. Oh, and by the way, we found some keys in a human being. And then, poof, they were gone. Labs blew up, burned to the ground. After breakthroughs, when they were about to come out and tell people this, all the information was done away with. Security vaults burned up. Strange things were happening to them. In all cases, they were dead. Dead, dead, dead. They were gone, dead. Because there's no such thing as evolution. That's why monkeys are still monkeys. Right? Things don't evolve, they devolve. Over the course of time, they devolve, not evolve. Right? You go and look at the insect world, and you go and look at the praying mantis. Some of the praying mantis look like leaves and flowers and things of that nature. Well, they found out the genetic code that makes them do this. All praying mantis have that same code, but they, 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 they're saying, well, who turned it on? Because these things do not turn on and off naturally. It's not based on the life form. It's based on something external. Who did this? And this is what they were figuring out. Something external has all the on and off switches to your genes. Isn't that funny? All the on and off switches to your genes, something has, and it's not found here on this planet. The only other on and off switch to your genes is your faith. That's why they were on a, in a mad dash in 2013, 14, 15, and 16 to find the soul. How can prominent scientists, government money, go into finding the human soul? Why do they want to find the human soul? Hmm? Why? Why are they going to Mars? Have you ever asked yourself, why do they go to Mars? I'll tell you why they're going to Mars. They're confirming history. Just in case you missed that, why are they going to Mars? They're confirming history. They're confirming history. Did you guys get that?
you may ask, well, what's that have to do with history? Trust me, they're, 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 they're checking out historical things. Historical things. Because they're doing this, they're also being guided by historical prophecies. Everything you see them do, they're operating by historical prophecies, based upon their bloodlines, based upon what they think their leaders actually wanted. They don't think like you and I. They teach you evolution, but they themselves know there's no such thing as evolution. They teach you how to submit yourselves. They themselves will never submit themselves to anything. That's why they're so prideful and arrogant and pious. They teach you the laws, but they themselves can never keep the laws. Because in a true royal system that they know about, these crooked folks, in a true royal system, the one who makes the laws also can change them to suit them. But they taught mankind to make a law and to keep it. The Lord gave us his law so that we can recognize our error. They tried to defame. You know what? They mixed up this name. I'll blame this on Zachariah's ascension. I, I put the blame on him. The word Yahweh. I put that blame on him. A lot of people, a lot of people don't like that name Yahweh. They think it's something else. They don't understand what that is. And so I put that on Zechariah's center. I never blame it on the individual who believes the writings that are so compelling, right? By a person who proclaimed himself to be authentic in what he was doing, associated with the CIA, inside connections and everything else that couldn't be verified. I blame that on him. Because of the nickname they stuck in there called Yah. And then Yahweh later came not understanding the false premise fed to this guy to totally break down the Bible. And, and it was, it's just terrible because now those people who believe that, they can't comprehend the Ten Commandments. They can't comprehend why people would believe in the Bible because this guy fed a false premise to everybody else based upon the information he received. And he was biased against it. See, what you don't know is this. There were two types of people in the times of Moses. Those who received the Torah. Those who received something else. When Moses went up on the mount, something else gave these other men something else, another doctrine. Most of the Jews today do not follow the Torah. They follow something else. That something else came from an origin that's just absolutely wicked. It came to them by way of spiritual beings. Moses went up and received the tablets of the Ten Commandments, which are confirmed inside of you. They received something else that's not confirmed inside of you. Anything confirmed in you is naturally in you. They received something else. And then when Israel was exiled into Babylon, it was solidified in a group of writings which then came back to Israel. That's why the feast days are all mixed up. I'm telling you the truth. The feast days are mixed up. See, God gave certain dates, and then these folks received other dates. What did they do when they went to Babylon? They mingled those other dates into the true ones. And people, people are, they're in Israel right now, and the majority of those that are in power, I'm going to tell you something and chew me out later. The majority of those in power that sit in high places of education and everything else do not like Jesus of Nazareth, nor do they like Moses, nor do they like the law that was given, nor do they like the freedom of mankind, nor do they accept the days that were given to Moses, but they had another set of something else that they added in there. Now, many people don't know this. They don't know this. Why do you think Jesus came in the first place? You know, for him to come means everything got so bad that there is no other way for correction. So he shed his blood for humanity. He died on the cross for humanity because all the information was messed up and everything else. 
It was so messed up, there's no way back. There's no self-correction that could ever take place to get you back in your proper position. You had to be a receiver of a brand new spirit. Because the old spirit in mankind was so incredibly tainted, so incredibly foul. And it's foul because it always goes opposite the word of God. Everything was so incredibly mixed up that even Jesus began to speak against those things. The only thing he fulfilled was a law within a person. And the teachings of God within a person, he fulfilled that with the two commandments he gave. But everything is so messed up, so messed up, that Jesus came. He truly is the only way, the only truth. And he is the light and the life of men. That's something else in it. That's why he came, because there was no other way. He has to come again to do away with the opposition because mankind can never rid themselves of the opposition. Why? Because they are completely and wholly taken over by the opposition. Here it is. If a person does not accept Christ, they are of a different seed. If a person can accept Christ in truth in their hearts, they are of one of the species of humanity. The other ones are not. A time is coming where it looks like the entire Bible is going to be wrong. Are you ready for that? A time is coming when they will truly scoff and mock everything you believe in. Are you prepared for that? Is the truth so much in your heart that you can survive that time? There will be proof and evidence coming from the very heavens, the false ones, the fallen ones, the rest of the one-third will just peer out their little ugly heads and mankind will rejoice over them. They'll have a spokesman here on this earth called the Antichrist. A human element that will beguile and work wonders in the earth. There will be technological breakthroughs that you could, can't believe. They will in fact, to those who follow the beast system, will think this guy has all the powers of God himself. What do you think they've been doing all this time? To groom the system is to, number one, be able to do the sacred thing, which is what? Create life. Out of nothing. Create life. Once you can create life. Oh, boy, that's a big one, isn't it? Put a check mark on that one. They've already done that. To be a master over biology. To restore someone's flesh by renewing certain genes. To cause a newness to the flesh. To get rid of diseases for those who serve the system. All these things. You know what? There's so many people suffering in the flesh right now that if they came up with a cure to get rid of all your ailments and you found out it was working, you would sit up one night in pain. Pharmacies are shut down. You can't get any medication or anything else. You said, well, oh, I just can't take it anymore. Let me go get the mark so I can get healed. You ever think of that? It says in the Bible, he will cause all free and poor, rich and bond to receive a mark in the right hand, the forehead. He will cause them to do that. That's why the Lord said, those who seek to save their lives are going to lose it. Those who lose their lives for his sake will find it. You ready? See, people aren't ready for that. We've been so comfortable that we really think the Antichrist is going to come while we're sitting in our homes like we are right now, kick back in the chair, debating like we do now in the comfort of our own homes with minor problems. We think that's how the Antichrist is going to come. No, there will be a calamity here. He will come after that calamity. All life will be shaken up on the face of the earth, and the destroyer is surely on its way. When was the last time you heard anybody talking about the destroyer? Who knows the real meaning of the word Nibiru and where that Nibiru came from? Who knows that's a combination of three Sumerian words and mankind calls it Nibiru? But how many of you know the destroyer is absolutely coming? That's why I like the names when people call it planet this or planet that. Right? I like that better than Nibiru. To say that word Nibiru, not knowing what it is, is a type of mockery, is what that is. It's a type of mockery. I blame that on Zechariah Ascension too. 
the writings of the 36, about 3600 year orbit, even that. I hate to tell you this, that was never in the Sumerian texts, nor in the lost books of some other folks who were Sumerian. Just, just, it was not there. The translation, that was a fill-in. Now, please, I, I know some of you have said, no, Zechariah Sintram was right. It all makes sense. Yes, it does to your flesh, it, because it's a good story that you can believe with your flesh, but spiritually it makes no sense. It is never confirmed spiritually, but the destroyer is. You start saying destroyer, and something in you stirs you say Nibiru and you're unsure. But if you say destroyer, there's almost like a flesh question marking you saying, wait a minute. Now, I don't know what that is, but somehow I'm familiar with what that is, but I have no clue what that is. But something tells me that one's real. Nibiru, I don't know about, but destroyer, yes. That one's real. But what is it? In the book of Jeremiah, you're going to see that even after Egypt... The destroyer was sent out again. The destroyer, something beyond the comprehension of man, the same thing that caused the plagues in Egypt. The condition of the atmosphere and the land, in the land of Egypt when the Hebrews were being delivered, the destroyer was there. It was there. It did many things. Or did many things all over the face of the earth. And it's coming back again. It's coming again. It's coming again. The situation's right now, just like the situation's prior to it's coming. The last time. It's coming again. And after that thing does what it does, societies are going to be put back together under the beast itself. Because it's not going to be, the destroyer won't be around for years. You can forget that. He's going to do what it does, and out of the ruins, here he comes. The man with the solutions. You won't care what he looks like, who he is. You're going to want relief so bad that you're going to just go take the mark. I can tell you right now, nobody's going to take a mark right now because we have our own comforts. We'll say, no, that's not constitutional. That's what we'll say. That's what they'll say in every nation. Based on their own particular constitution, they'll say, no. Well, we're not doing that. You can't force the citizens to do all that. So what are they doing now? They're setting up a pre-structure before the breakdown. And then the breakdown comes, and all who survive will be loyal. But somehow, some of you will survive also. Not everybody. Some of you. Because everybody written in the book of life is not going to worship the dragon which gave power to the beast, nor will they worship the beast, nor will they take the mark of the beast. Which means those found written in the book of life are not going to be here. They Listen, now a lot of people think that's when the, I, I don't get into the rapture uh, stuff. I don't do that. I don't do that because I already told you I've committed. I, I don't seek to save my life, nor do I seek a way of escape from anything the Lord assigns me to do. That's his business. Uh, we're not appointed to his wrath if we truly do belong to him, right? We're not appointed to his wrath. But I've been through many things, and I'm still here. You've been through many things, and you're still here. One more day is not going to make a difference to me. Every day, Lord willing, Lord, give me strength to do so. Today, I will choose to serve the Lord. And if tomorrow comes and the Lord gives me strength, I'll say the same thing. And you truly do become an outcast if you don't want to serve the Lord. Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. I choose to serve the Lord. I don't choose to serve anything else. That means he's above all things in my life. That means nothing man-made will ever supersede my Father in heaven, nor my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, nor his Holy Spirit. Nothing man-made will ever do that. Nothing angelically made will ever do that. No doctrine will ever do that. And that's who I am. So to me, it's of no consequence what comes tomorrow. Today is of consequence to me. My servitude in truth it's very important. Servitude is not slavery because our servitude is by choice. 
it is not pressed upon us. Servitude of the world is pressed upon you. You were born into slavery. You call for the change of a system, yet you serve that same system that does not change. How ironic. Now, there always comes a point in time in every single kingdom that the undoing happens. You live in the days of the undoings of all kingdoms. All kingdoms will be undone. That's why this new system, which is already in place, bits and pieces are being shown. Listen, there's going to be, I'll just say it, there's going to be some natural catastrophes caused by external pressures upon the solar system that will make everything you've ever seen on the face of this earth pale in comparison. And then, then red dust will be all over the place. By that time, sickness will also be all over the place. Then a war. See, a war will begin and coincide with something in the heavens. You know why? They're going to take full advantage. Full advantage during this time. And it's also echoed in prophecy in the Bible. Destroyer? Absolutely real. The composition of the destroyer, no man knows. No man knows. God never told anyone. Nor could anyone see it clear enough to comprehend it. But I tell you one thing they did say. It does not look solid. It looks like it moves. I can take something else, too. If any large body gets close to the earth, you're looking at uh, uh, um, um, exchanges of plasma so incredibly powerful. Hey, I'll tell you guys something. You know those little cave etchings that you see? It looks like little people. They're in a very, uh, a very specific shape. That's what plasma discharges look like at the base. Plasma discharges have a very unique shape at the bottom. And it almost looks like an etching of how they used to etch ancient man all over the place. That's what it looks like. With a long stem at the top. Right? Plasma discharges at the base look just like that. Planetary plasma discharges they saw with Elenin, but they didn't tell you about it. They saw that discharge. They have it recorded. They saw it. They ain't tell you about it. In fact, they're not going to tell you about a bunch. They're not going to tell you about the meteor storm that's on the way. Is there a meteor storm on the way that will set many things on fire? You better believe it. You better believe it. Don't you ask me for a date. You better just understand it's coming. Oh, it's coming. Because all the trash is coming. There's a shock wave that will be in here. It should affect us in October. A shock wave. Now, it's possible the shockwave on its bow is carrying garbage with it also. So we could have speckled impacts on the face of the earth, the cinders coming to the earth. That could happen. So what we're going to witness is an undoing of life as we, you know, so comfortable to having. We, We become quite conditioned to natural disasters, but something else is happening to us spiritually. We're being pressed spiritually. Some of you in the last month, you really have been pressed to, hey, you better give up everything that you can give up from this world. You better get away from materialistic things. You have been urged to do this. Guess what else has happened? Some of you, a false type of restoration of stuff has come to you in the span of a week like a hoping your stuff again to try and get you off guard to not pay attention. These are the times where you need to pay attention. You know when Jesus said, when you see all these things begin to come to pass, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. You know, if you sit there and look at that, you'll say, wait a minute. He tells us to look up. But why now? He said, because your redemption draweth nigh. Where were we looking before then? Now, this is Jesus saying this. He says, look up. Lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. And it makes you wonder, what state were we in prior to looking up? Now, you may think looking up means to look up into the stars of heaven. Well, that's not what was departed to me spiritually. 
what was departed to me spiritually. And it came in a time of prayer. That's what it normally happens, folks. Was that we focus and look toward Christ and Christ only because we were looking everywhere else before those things, before we recognized all those things. Which means right now, see, we were focused on the world, its issues. We were focused on our families, its issues. We were trying to step our way through life to understand things in proportion to our growth spiritually. But there comes a point in time when an abandonment of all things must take place place and then we focus totally on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ plucking things out of our lives that do not belong and when you see all these when you see these things begin to come to pass then look up for your redemption draweth nigh well in, from our perspective who is up Jesus said I must ascend go up to the right hand of the Father so who are we looking up to we're looking to the things of God to stay focused on them no longer looking in the things of the world. It's just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Listen to me. They were in Sodom and Gomorrah. They observed all the bad things and the good things that were happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. But when the angels came and told them, get out of Sodom and Gomorrah, oh, and by the way, don't look back because a great destruction is coming. And if you do, you will be turned into a pillar of salt. It's the same thing right before the destruction. God always commands his people to look forward, do not look back. Can't you see that pattern with the Lord? But prior to him destroying things, what does he do? Focus on his instructions. Have your focus on his instructions and abandon everything else. Yes, abandon everything else. Because if you don't abandon everything else, you too will be salty turned into a pillar of salt, lost, lost. Can you all see that? Can you see that? Is that easy to comprehend? So he's saying, look up, look toward him, look toward the things of the father. Stop looking everywhere else. Everything you need, right? You know what? He was, when, when they walked out of Sodom and Gomorrah, were they not given instruction? So what does that mean? That means a great destruction and undoing is coming upon the face of the earth. A destruction and undoing were even the sight of it. If you look back and lose your concentration just for a little bit, it could cost you everything. It'll cost you everything. I pray to my Lord God above. I, I, I tell you what, I had a dream one time. And I was caught off guard by what descended from the heavens. And from that day forward, and it's been many years, I've always prayed, Lord, please don't let me get caught off guard. Give me the spirit to be aware every day of my life. Don't ever let me become complacent. I pray for these things. I don't want comfort. I don't want complacency. I don't want a foolish dream in this world fulfilled. I want to be alert. I don't ever want to be caught off guard by the things that the Father sends. When he sends something, I need to be aware of it. I'm of no good to anybody if I'm comfortable. I'm not. If I'm seeking pleasure in this life, I'm no good to anybody. See, I'm convinced and I know what's coming. I need not communicate that to anybody. When you believe and know what's coming, you'll do everything you can do to help your brothers and your sisters prepare in truth, which is to say, to have them make their abode in Christ. You cannot prepare for just one thing. You can't prepare for just the destroyer. You can't prepare for just the water rising with no explanation. Don't we say that all the time on COT? Because it's going to happen without a tsunami. With no indication the water is going to rise one day. You're going to go into your house and turn around and go try to go back out to your car. And the land will be full with water. With no indication of water. It will be preceded by bugs. 
by migration. They'll try to explain it, but what use is it explaining anything when it's taking place? Hmm. The second wave, we're going to talk about the second wave. I'm trying to set the stage for something here. Well, I'm going to talk fast. I can't talk fast. People tell me sometimes you talk too fast. So I have to slow down. I have to slow down. Radiation is increasing on the Earth. Have you guys noticed? And it's not because of Fukushima. Because on the other planets where we have probes, radiation is also increasing. It's messing up electronics. Our satellites are starting to feel the crunch of increased radioactivity. Breaches have begun in the satellite systems. Radio frequencies are being disturbed by many things. Radiation is increasing. The bow shock on the outer edge of the heliosphere has certainly been breached. Planets are heating up beyond belief. The Earth, too, will heat up beyond belief. We're being perpetually hit by just tons of things. It's getting stronger. The culmination of these particles that are hitting us will coalesce around the month of December. The date on the website is still an estimation. That's man's estimation. But during that time, Certainly, when the shock wave hits us in October, all of us are going to know what the true impact of this thing will be. If that shock wave causes volcanic eruptions, if it causes earthquakes, well, then, then I, I, I will just feel free to talk about the rest of it and what you need to prep for. Because it's on the same trajectory as the big boy. So we'll have a shock wave in October. Then the big boy right behind it. But for some odd reason, it will ne it does not disturb five weird objects. We're going to talk about that second wave, radioactivity, CERN, HARP, and you. You're not born as a slave. But many people have voluntarily become a slave to the system and they're fighting for it. Oh, they're fighting for it. We've got to wake up so that we can see. You know, when a person wakes up, they don't start blaming anything. They say, thank you, Lord, for waking me up. They don't get mad and angry either. They say, thank you, Lord, for waking me up. We ought to do the same thing. When you find out a truth, don't get angry at that truth. Don't get angry because you missed everything that was happening, but say, thank you, Lord, for awakening me. Now, what must I do? to help awaken my brothers and my sisters. And don't ever think that your knowledge alone is going to wake them up. It is the power of the living God. That's the alarm clock, not you. What man will behold, believe me, they will never doubt again that God is real. But prior to that time, a struggle will begin. A struggle for both dominance and life itself. You have to be ready for that struggle. And undoing of both men and the earth is about to take place. The time where the Lord said, if he had not cut that time short, no flesh would have been saved. And that doesn't mean salvation. That means no flesh would have lived, would have survived. That means an undoing of animals, an undoing of mankind, an undoing of structures in every single country. That's a global event that's about to take place. A global event. Revelation augments and expands some of those global events. But in the sixth seal, that's the curtain that it's done. Close the curtain. During the trumpets is the finality of some things. See, within the sixth seal are the trumpets. And within the trumpets are other things. The sixth seal is it. It's the finish, the end of the story. The seventh seal is the completeness. That's what the seventh seal is. It's complete in the seventh seal. It's also the time of the wrath of the living God. When it talks about the beast system and the fall of Babylon, that's a history lesson. 
Remember, John was being shown something of each part of what the Lord gives. And there's a pattern of how the Lord gives dreams and visions. And we have the Bible to comprehend it. I think that's awesome. We don't need to guess anymore. We need to actually read. And stop asking each other, what does this mean? We go to the Lord and say, Lord, pull a Daniel on him. What did Daniel do? Daniel chasing himself. Because he was bothered by that dream. He said, Lord, I need an answer. He prayed for his people. What did the Lord do? He sent Gabriel to give him an answer. Who is Gabriel? He's the one that interprets dreams. And the only one that comes close to him in doing so is Michael. Uriel and Raphael, they're still good. They're doing something else in the Middle East. You need to pull a Daniel. Say, Lord, what does this mean? And via the Holy Spirit, not an angel, via the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will teach you what it is. So you have the Holy Spirit now. Some of you think you need an angel. What do you think the Holy Spirit's for? Some of you think you need an angel, but you're endowed with the power of the living God inside of you via the Holy Spirit. But the angels will fight for you because you belong to the kingdom. And they will fend off the Satans and the devils and the fallen cherubim. They will fight them off. And you won't even know about it. But you, ladies and gentlemen, are part of a greater kingdom a kingdom that will come, that will be established here on this earth. And I really am debating whether or not to go through some historical things of, but I'm going to wait until the experts, until we can actually get in the same spot. We were going to do that last Saturday, but that didn't work out. So we'll do it one of these Saturdays to go over some of that, some of those texts with you all. The translations are, some of the translations are highly sensitive and classified. Do you know that? It's supposed to be public, but no, not so. They're not public. They can never be public because it will tell you too much. But the parts that are, that are not classified yet, they can be discussed. They can be discussed. But you're going to see them anyway. Might as well prep for them. They're prepping you. The world's prepping you for the unknown anyway. They keep sneaking out these little articles don't they these little telltale signs of things they keep telling you something here's their communication you ready for this something strange is happening i know for a fact that some of the elite are told to get the titles and listen to me to get the titles of the movies from a certain channel to receive a statement they're the ones that allow the movies to be made in the first place. They influence Hollywood. They are Hollywood. So what is Hollywood doing? They're communicating via the titles. Now, you think that's funny, don't you? If I ever went into a day of that, you'd probably fall out of your chair and say, what in the world? This is beyond coincidence because it happens every month. That's not coincidence. Communications. A disaster communication is being put out right now. And you missed it. Oh, you missed it. They told people exactly what the disaster would be. But only those people who know what to pay attention to. And then they, you know what they do to everybody else? Huh? They give you garbage. They have people in alternative media right now that are being paid to disrupt what you learn, to make sure you never get the full truth. But all they do is harass you. And when these laws come out, let me tell you what they're going to do. Because ministries need to know this. They're going to have people that come into your ministry that are going to blame you for something and defame you in front of the world and cost you a lot of money. So I tell you this, anybody who has a ministry, be holy in all manner of communication. Be careful to speak out of your own spirit and speak the words of the Lord. They can never hold you accountable for saying what the Lord said. But they can hold you accountable for speaking out of your own spirit or out of emotion. Be very careful. They do have plants in just about every single ministry out there. And when they raise their heads, 
If they can get you alone and get you to talk to this woman or this guy over here, the next thing you know, you got a false suit coming against you for sexual harassment. They'll come up with a weird problem just so you can come out to meet them, and they're going to fry you. I'm telling you the truth. This is what they're going to do. They have agents stuck everywhere right now. They're part of your ministries right now. You just don't know who they are. It's impossible to know who they are, but they're there. And when they're given the order to strike or you open yourself up for a strike, they're going to take full advantage. So then be holy in all manner of communication. Be holy. Do everything with a witness. Be holy in all manner of communication. That's why I don't talk to females on the phone ever, alone, never. I never do that, ever. I seldom talk to any males on the phone alone. You'd be shocked. You see, listen, when you know the potential of the flesh, why would you set yourself up by saying, well, they wouldn't do that? You don't know what they'll do. They live in the flesh. They're capable of doing anything. Anything is capable of being twisted. Have a witness. We live in those days. The Lord will not have us ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy. This is one of his devices. A device is a plot or plan. Be careful. Be holy in all manner of communication. Satan can never accuse a person for speaking what the Lord spoke, but Satan can always accuse a person on what they speak out of their own spirits or out of their emotions. Please remember that. He can no longer accuse Christ. He can accuse us if we speak out of our own emotions. If he accuses me of something that Christ said, I'll say, oh, yes, I said that. So his accusation won't work. It's not going to cause me pain, but if I slip and say something due to my emotions, well, I'm the dodo. Because the Lord cautioned us about that. Speaking out of our own spirits. Speaking out of our flesh. We're holy vessels. And then we speak garbage. You can't do that. You shouldn't do that. Folks, hear me out there. Well, you guys pray for those who, uh, of which these uh, storms are developing. But I tell you what, in the South Pacific Ocean, there's a stalled cold current and a hot current all the way over from the South Pacific to the basin of the Indian Ocean. I mean, it's, a, it's like a conveyor belt that's feeding all these vortices and it's causing issues. And as we said before, the moisture and levels this year are going to be very um, different much more moisture in the atmosphere. You guys remember we talked about that. I didn't tell you the rest, and I stopped talking about the models because you had to be prepped to understand <laughs> what I'm going to say. Um, I am privy to information. I, I, I do a lot of engineering things by trade. And um, no longer the... Well, I'm getting away from one field, and I thank God from, for that. I really do thank God for the release he's granted me, but... I deal with a lot of technical interpretations of things, and some of the modeling is is just, well, all I can say is it's not real, right? I mean, it's absolutely real, but you would say this is, that that can't happen. It's not real. Well, I can tell you this, you don't know, many people couldn't fathom the capability of Earth itself. I know everybody looks for an external danger that would destroy things on the Earth, but the energy being released in these, it's just astronomical energy that's going to be released in the earth. And, and, and then you deal with harp and CERN, which has to do with you, right? There are many different, uh, just like the ISS. The ISS performs many different things. I can assure you they're not trying to cure cancer upon the ISS. The thing of the ISS is a way station or jump station, as some people call it. Hope I didn't mess up anybody's paradigm with that. But just think the ISS is something different. And um, some of the other stations out there, think of them as something different. Right? But they're not up there just twiddling their thumbs trying to do things. But mankind is seeking to save his life. Mankind, these elite folks want to save their own lives. They have given up on one paradigm. And they have been focused on another since 2005. 2005 was actually the date 
of course, after 2004, well, 2004 actually triggered everything, but it made things all too real. 2004, a chunk of our atmosphere was missing from a magnetar blow that nobody knew about, start messing up the ozone and everything else. Well, they spotted some other, other ones that are on this way, that are inbound, right? And there's hardly any, there, there, you know, you talk about survivability rates and things of that nature. You're, you're looking at energy levels that no one's quite used to. I liked when Anthony Patch talked in BP Earthwatch. They talk about the magnets in CERN. That part I love them to talk about. Because with, an, with a large energy burst, something will happen to the magnetosphere. Now, the only way to keep the magnetosphere and to keep these underground bases to survive in the, in the event of something uh, atmospherically wrong would be what? To reproduce the Earth's magnetosphere over these underground bases, right? Oh, and by the way, the underground bases are absolutely real. They already, they already told you what half of them were and how they built them in a very short, or a short span. It only took back then, 1947, five years to make one. How long do you think it takes to make one now, and what do they actually have under there? Remember the explosions that were taking place and the people that were reporting vents opening up in the desert, shooting stuff out? And get, that was the activation of the bases. In 2013, we did discuss, 2013-14, we discussed that certain officials would be reported dead, missing, right? But they're not dead or missing. They took up occupation somewhere else because once you go down there, you're not coming up again. One of the key signs that you'll know things are underway is when you start seeing officials outside of natural sunlight. In other words, you won't see real shots of them walking around, recent, you know, real shots of them walking around with the weather and everything else. They can replicate that, but people can catch on to that too. Which is why everything right now on CNN, NBC, Fox, and all these other places, they have a digital overlay. And that's why sometimes they have problems. So people's hair may turn green. Their lips may move to the side of their face because everything is being digitally replicated and overlay. They're showing you real-time images from something that's not real. That's what happens, right? That's what they're doing. I don't necessarily believe what, what somebody came and told me. They said, well, that, that means, you know, that's their true nature showing. No, it's a digital overlay. And their faces will pixelate their suit clothes. They can change the color of a person's suit and color of a person's hair, color of a person's lips. They can take moles off somebody's face in real time and everything else. They can whiten their teeth in real time and everything else. So you can't trust anything you see on TV, right? You, you can't do that. They even have, they even have real-time speakers, which means I could sit here and talk and somebody, else, somebody else's face could show and they will make all the motions of my mouth overlaid into that character's mouth, and you can tell the difference between the two. So if a person goes underground, you're going to stop seeing natural images of them. You will. But most of them get reported as missing or dead, suicide, something like that. And they're not missing. They have employment somewhere else. It's all happening again. So it's happened before. It's happening again. Russia... You know, I know a lot of people think they're innocent, but they're only doing what they're doing because they have their own new world order they want to start. Isn't that funny? They, Putin sat there and said, we're not going to be part of the new world order. And what are they doing? They're starting their own new world order. See, you can't, you, you have to look beyond the rhetorical devices. You do. You have to look beyond them so you don't fall prey to them. Just sit back and watch and see what they're actually doing. How can you say you're not going to be a part of the new world order and then you go out and start one yourself? But what is that? See, that's all you have to see. You have to see the obvious, the, the things that are right in front of your face and stop falling for the rhetoric. These guys are expert, uh, they're experts at rhetorical devices and people fall for them every single day. You can't fall for those things anymore. They are preparing to survive. They want to survive they know exactly what's coming. They know when it's coming. They want to survive. They will be taken by surprise by way of fear because even they underestimate the fear factor that will be involved. They have to protect themselves from the average citizen, which has no idea something is coming, and they will try and destroy everybody who did not tell them. I'm telling you the truth. It will be chaos topside. Imagine something came. 
and people find out they're going to die in 20 days, and that's what they really believe. Who are they going to go after? The government. They want to get to the governments of all nations right now so bad, that will be the trigger point. Let's go get them. So if you were the government, you would have to protect yourself from those people, right? Well, they will. They're going to protect themselves from those people by going into these um, protected areas. Okay? Protected areas. Which means, prior to that time, they will have a war. They're going to have a war. You guys ready for war? Because they will have a war, a purposed war. Right now they're fighting over land. Mass. Don't ever, listen, I know that many people really think that some of the paradigms like America does not like Putin and Putin does not like America and, and Iran just hates this nation or that nation, all these other nations. The only one that's real is Israel. They don't like Israel. They want that removed. Why? Because it's in the way of the new formation of nations. There's a federation being set up. And they want Israel out the way with its faith and everything else. Why? Because there are other entities involved now. And the Mahdi will certainly rise. But they, that these characters are going to rise. Within a war. There will be a war. A great war. A war that is so terrible. That if it is not cut short. No flesh would have been saved. We have developed yet again weaponry. And, and you have to ask yourself. Why in the world. Have we developed nuclear weapons in the first place? Why do we spend so much time developing techno technological things? Why do we have computer systems like we have them like this? Why did do, why do they do that? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. It's not so you can have better entertainment. Here's what they've been doing. You guys ready for this? Every idea that you have. Now, since the time of Einstein and everybody else, they needed a way to tap the productivity of people by way of their what they thought was their own imagination, but they had ingenious ideas and projects. And what they've been doing is, through a computer, they can now investigate all the ideas of everybody, taking the best out of everybody, and utilizing it for the military-industrial complex. Your ideas are feeding a machine that you have no idea about. And so they perfect what they're doing based upon the participation of everybody. If you are on a computer or a phone with a wonderful, great idea, a breakthrough in technology, or you've figured something out, and you so much as shared it with somebody else, your information is being parsed, cataloged, analytics have been run on that, comparisons, it's been tried, and everything else. So you are effectively a tool in the system. You're like a tool that they keep feeding. They feed just enough to get things out of you. And there's hardly any escape. But you have Christ. So that system is flawed concerning you. You have Jesus of Nazareth. So that system has no bearing upon your life. You have Yeshua HaMashiach. So that system cannot govern your life. You're a child of a true king. So that system can never oppress your life. Although you were bondage to it, your soul is free from it. It no longer has your soul, but look out into the world at how many souls it has. Now, what's going to happen when the radiation continues to increase and baldness goes throughout the earth and people stop having babies? Because it is by way of the radiation and a strange illness that the child birth rate is going to drop to near zero. No babies are going to be born. Don't you know radiation stops children from being born? Do you guys know that? There are different types of radiation that have different effects on your cellular structure. Do you know viruses thrive in types of radiation? So what's that mean? With an increase in radiation comes viruses. That'll be 7,000 times more potent than what they are now. Who's going to survive that pestilence? What about the things in the sea that kill off the fish and mutations and things of that nature? That's rampant all over the place, and Fukushima is not the direct cause. That's almost like an excuse for something else. Everybody was talking about Fukushima for a long time, then all of a sudden nothing. And because Fukushima didn't work to convince you that that radiation, man-made radiation, is the true killer of the planet, it'll happen over in Germany or the UK next. Mark my words. There will be another nuclear disaster overseas shortly. 
understand it, they have to do it. They will do it. This is the way they work, and it's going to happen. Yes, I said it right here tonight. It will happen. Somewhere between, what, Germany, UK, somewhere along those areas. France, who knows? It, it's going to be somewhere over there because Fukushima was not enough. One enough. The truth is, they could have stopped. They could. They could stop any meltdown. They, how far do you think they have gotten with nuclear devices in the first place? They know how to nullify a nuclear device. They know how to nullify radiation. They've gone far beyond chemotherapy for cancer too. They don't have to give you chemotherapy. But you're not privy to those things. For one, if you knew they had developed this and they held it back, you would be angry with the government and demand things of them. See, it, it is just too much. You find out there's a solution, and then you find out how long that solution has been there. And then the people get angry with the government and they rise up against the government. They're doing everything that they can that you do not rise up against them. So what are they doing? They're fulfilling your dream of what you want to keep you calm. But didn't the Lord in the Bible tell us these days what happened? That pestilence would kill a large portion of mankind. Cancer is a pestilence. Disease, pestilence. Plagues is something that won't go away. Cancer is a plague. But the Lord already told us these things would take place. He already told us this. But October, and the shockwave is going to tell you and me what we're really looking at in December. I don't know. I, I really don't know. You just don't know the outcome to these things, but I can tell you this. There are debris fields out there that are being pushed. They, they, they have breached the heliosphere. They're coming on in. Something has disturbed the Kuiper Belt again. Objects are flying all over the place. We're in a new place. This, this entire solar system is in a new place. And some of the unreal things are about to happen. Now, you can't truly prepare for all of that. But you can prepare your souls with the Word of God. You can prepare to the point where no fear will ever be within you. You can prepare yourself to the point where you're standing in truth, having done all you can do to stand. These things will come with the entities. Maybe that you're, you're not ready for that, are you? The manifestation of the spiritual realm will also take place. Mankind will call them, you know what they're going to call them. But if you're not careful, you'll be seduced by the peace they offer yourselves. I hope you're ready. Through peace he shall destroy many. That peace will be all over the place. And if you're one of those ones who've been in some type of sock team, then you know the feeling you get. You know a portion of the true story. You were dispatched overseas. You were part of recovery teams and this, that, and the other. You know it's both terrifying and fulfilling at the same time. But in all cases, you know they're all untrustworthy, inherent liars, they mislead. They have an agenda. And for what reason? Not a good reason. But they're trying to establish an ancient right in the earth. And that's what the B system is all about. An ancient right. That's why Jesus is coming. That's why our Father is coming to put an end to it all. Because if he does not come, it'll simply be a cycle. It'll start all over again. But this happens to be the last time. Because Jesus has finally come. See, before Jesus did not come. Now he has come. Men have rejected him. And we accept him. We know this is the last time. Time is nearing that the, de the dead will come up out of their graves. Some to everlasting life. Some to everlasting contempt. We live in those days where everything is trying to pull you away from the truth of your Lord and Savior. You live in the days of the great falling away when men will serve demons again 
as gods. They will serve demons again as gods. They will devote their life to edifying demonic entities, evil entities, entities that are rebellious. And remember, all these evil entities, true evil kisses you on the cheek. True evil pats you on the back. True evil will tell you it's going to be okay. That's what true evil does. It gets very close to you. True evil is never recognized as evil. Evil is not obvious. Evil is a title. And those behind those titles work in secret and in shadows. And they do damage every day of their lives. And they have great patience. Again, when we learn how to see the dragon, then you can see it all. But most people cannot identify the dragon and his seven humps, his seven heads, his seven jurisdictions, his seven powers. We've read that in the Bible, principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. What is a power? What did the beast, what did the dragon give the beast? His power, his seat and great authority. Both have seven heads. The beast made on earth has seven heads. The dragon has seven heads. A replica. Except the dragon didn't have ten crowns. Did he? No, he didn't. The Antichrist, even he is the eighth, one of the leaders of one of those heads the Antichrist, but the beast is what the Antichrist made the world worship. The spirit of the Antichrist is already installed. The ground, the groundwork is laid for the Antichrist to come forward. The beast system is near completion, and what I mean by that, it's already been in operation. But you're about to see it. Israel, in policy, this year, they're not going to be in good shape. Lord have mercy. The Antichrist, with the two horns as a lamb, the false prophet, that's what he is, the false prophet, because he's causing, he is a religious figure that speaks as a dragon. But he's also one of the horns on the heads, which means he's in charge of one of those heads. One of the heads, and the heads are the seven mountains of which the horse sitteth. But on one of the heads is the eighth, which is the Antichrist, the son of perdition. And he causes the world to do the unthinkable. He fulfills the religious need of all people. That's something most people won't tell you. You see, human beings have a religious need. They have to believe in something greater than themselves. The Antichrist is going to fulfill that need. We have two candidates. But it says, this thing will worship a God as fathers knew not. That throws people off, doesn't it? He'll worship a God his fathers did not know. This is a pure rebel who will descend out of the bottomless pit and come up with a brand new religion. He will increase the beast and cause everybody to worship the first beast. You know, the one that the dragon gave his power seat great authority. He's going to cause the world to worship that first beast. He's going to say, make an image to that beast. He'll make people worship that beast. And then he'll set himself up to be the God of the earth. But he will worship a God his fathers did not know. Anybody before him does not know what this guy's about to worship. So then that throws out some candidates. But it also tells you that this individual, right, is fooling the people sitting under him right now. And his true nature is going to be known. So he will make everybody give voluntary observance to the beast system. To the system. The system of which he sits. 
he's going to cause people to worship. He will worship the God of force, which means he has an affiliation with those who have an affiliation with the secret societies. Uh-oh. I think of three candidates right now. But he has his own nation. Remember, he subdues three kings upon his, or, yeah, three kings upon his rising. He subdues them. So I ask you this, what three kings fell and one took its place? You can go find that. Three kings have to fall upon his rising. When that little horn comes up and he exalts himself, three other kings must be subdued. He comes up from a small people. He has no regard of a woman. And he magnifies himself. He does not regard a woman. That's a religious figure that believes in a type of celibacy or just does not count women as anything. That sounds Islamic. I think it's a hybrid. I think the Mahdi is a hybrid religion, a brand new hybrid religion, because the Mahdi will step on the scene, and you don't know who this guy is. He'll step on the scene, and he will install his own stuff into the world. I, it is my personal belief, I think that's the Mahdi. I think that's the Mahdi. Because everything they're calling for, even the place he comes from, he comes up from a small people, a small country, a small country. And he will scatter among them the prey, the spoils, and the riches, yea. And he will come up by proxy. There's already a prof uh, prophecy about that. Whoever this Antichrist figure is, he comes up in the stead of somebody else. He comes up when somebody falls. In his estate, it says, the Antichrist comes up. Before the Mahdi rises, do you not know that the leader has to fall. The world has to be burning. Israel must be attacked. Now we do know that he convinces all those who have indignation against the Holy Covenant to trample the Holy City 40 and 2 months. All those who have indignation against the Holy Covenant. Who has indignation against the Holy Covenant? Two people have indignation against the Holy Covenant. Number one, those who believe in Islam. Those who believe that Israel should be wiped off the face of the earth. And number two, those who believe that their religion supersedes Israel's religion. Those are your two candidates. But in any case, this guy is going to pop up and worship a God his fathers knew not. He will plant his tabernacles in the seas. And it's already taking place. And there will be multiple images of the beast. And he will cause them to rule over many. Little stations all over the place. Where people, a, a, a central point in every single place. And he'll cause them to rule over the people. And that's the same individual that people will never go against. Don't ever think, as a side note, don't ever think Iran is a pushover. Don't ever think that. See, for a long time, we had no interest in Iran because the oil and the archaeology was not there. Make no mistake, the world is hunting for something that proves a prophecy to them. They're desperately hunting for something. Make no mistake, they're hunting for things right now. And it is dominion or absolute loss to them. But we live in this time. We live in this time. No, not an early wave. It's only a shock wave coming in October from the same direction the main body is coming from. Lord have mercy on us. That shockwave is coming. So, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll keep going. God bless you all.